Welcome to a tutorial video with Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to go over how to work with CSS grids. CSS grids are a powerful way to create grids through placing elements with respect to each other in a parent element. Using specific or percentage sizing these elements can be highly responsive or matching exact numbers. However, and here is the big caveat, this is still experimental CSS technology. Most browsers support it, but not all of them. Notably, Microsoft's Internet Explorer and Edge browsers only have partial support as of this writing, which means it's supported in other browsers like Chrome and Firefox, but you may have issues with Microsoft's Internet Explorer as well as Edge, and depending on what functionality you use, it may or may not work. So why would you want to use CSS grids at all? Well, while creating user interfaces can be done through positioning different elements on the page via CSS and things like position and width and height and a number of other CSS rules, grids allow elements to be positioned in relation to each other instead of to the page itself. So instead of using the position like I just talked about and a combination of width and height and other CSS rules, grids are far easier and unless set using very specific sizes or with additional rules that would conflict with this, will always be responsive to changes in screen sizes, especially if you send it to percentages and if the screen changes, the grid itself would also change without needing additional rules and would also work across devices and always appear the same in relation to the page and other elements and other elements arranged with it. So let's look, let's look at some examples here. So in example one here, you see four different boxes arranged in a grid pattern. I have one, two, three, and four. One and four are, have a background color of green, and two and three have a background color of red. Now this is an example of using a grid setup to use positionality here of 50% width and 50% height. That is columns that are 50% and rows that are 50%. So this takes up this exact movement here of 50% here for one and column one, row one. And column two, row two is 50%. Column one, row two is 50% and column two, row two is 50%. So each of these are equal, equally divided among the page uh, screen size. And let's pause for a second here and go look at this code so I can go over it here. So within example one, let's pull this up. So we see an initial wrapper that contains the grid. So within using CSS grid, we need at least one element to be the grid element and then anything within it will obey those grid rules. So we see example one wrapper example one one, example one two, example one three, and example one four classes named to elements within this. So we have a grid and then we have our four elements within that grid with the content one, two, three, and four. Now we'll pause here and go look at the style sheet. Now within the Twine Editor, if we ever want to edit the style sheet, the additional style rules within the Twine Editor, we go down, we click on the title of the story, and then we go up to Edit Story Style Sheet. So our example one code is right here. Now we'll see here, using the CSS rules, we set display to be grid, and then using grid template columns, we say 50% and 50%. Now, as I mentioned, when we looked at it, we saw that there will be two columns and each one will take up 50% of the available space. Right underneath that will be the same setup. Template grid template rows will also take up 50% of the available space with respect to other CSS rules and the other will take up 50%. So we have two columns and two rows, each of them taking up a percentage that is in relation to whatever free available space they have. And then we have one, two, three, and four named classes, for example, one. In each of these, we have a named grid row. Grid row one, style CSS rule within example one, one. Grid row one and example one, two, assign both of these to the first grid row. The same with three and four, grid row two and grid row two. Then we see with the background color CSS rule that this will be green, 
Example 1, 2 will be red. Example 1, 3 will be red. And example 1, 4 will be green. And that's what we see in practice. Green, red, red, green. Arranged in that order. And of course, 50%, 50%, 50%, and 50%. Arranged using grid template columns. Each of these set at 50%. And we're enabling the grid CSS rules with display grid. So moving on to a second example, we can actually expand these and instead of individually setting each class to what, what grid row or what grid column we want, we can actually sort of set up the rules and then it, all of the elements within a parent element will inherit all of these and then arrange themselves for us. So if we wanted to create 64 blocks here in case we wanted to create some type of game board like for checkers or chess or serve for some other game and we wanted them to arrange automatically as long as we had them from 1 to 64 well we can do that in the same way using the CSS grid style rules so coming back to example 2 let's look at that and we see example 2 is pretty long but it starts the exact same way we have an initial wrapper class a parent to the grid and then all of the content within this and all of these elements have the same class, example two box. The only difference being their internal content is set to an increasing number from one to 64. So let's go look at the CSS for that. So again, we come down to the name of the story, we click on it, we we'll go to edit story style sheet. Scrolling down to example two code, we see it's actually much shorter than the example one code, which had a bunch of different specifications for grid row, whatever, grid row, whatever. And this, however, same idea, we have another wrapper, we're setting display to be grid, so we're using the CSS grid rules, except in this time, instead of saying 50% and 50%, we're using repeat functionality to say, okay, repeat this, we want eight columns, we want each column to be 60 pixels. The same for the next rule, grid template rows, eight rows, 60 pixels each, which saves us from hiding to write out a number of different these, a number of different entries here instead of this we have two and this we're using repeat for eight eight columns eight rows we're also using an additional CSS rule here for grids that say okay auto flow set to rows so break on rows so as soon as the content exceeds whatever we send it to for rows break at that point and stick it in the next row and then stick it in the next row and stick it in the next row until you can't anymore and that allows us to, as we saw, list a bunch of elements within a parent and then use the CSS rules to break on rows and force them back in order again. So we saw here 1 through 8, because that extends the end of the 8th column, back to row, 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 until we run out of them at 64. And then there are, of course, no more elements or it would have pushed it into a new row. So we can use auto flow rules, either row or column, depending on how we want things to push and move, depending on what we stick in there. Additionally here, for example box 2, we have some just so, just so additional rules here to make the content pop a little bit more. So we have a border set to 2 pixels solid black, the extra border here, which on a black background is not as obvious. And then we have a background color set to sort of a dark gray and then a text align center just so that it's in aligned horizontally center so we can see the text as well but this is doing all the work here using repeat and then we set it to whatever eight and then size and then whatever and then size and as you can see we can reduce the complexity of the code instead of setting grid rows to just use the repeat in the same way so let's move on to the third and last example so the third and last example here uses a, sort of a common UI setup where you might have a left sidebar with some content, you might have a center with some content, and you have a right sidebar with some content. It's pretty common in websites where they have different sidebars on each side and then a centralized content area. Or common in gameplay as well when you want to show content to the player over on one side and then have content on another side. But we can do the same thing using CSS grids. So let's look at example three. So example three is set up similar to example one in that we still have the same idea of a wrapper that sets up the grid. And then we have named classes, left sidebar, named class content, named class right sidebar. And then I've just put the names in here so we can see what they are. So let's go look at the CSS code for that.
Again, we're going down to the name of the story. We're clicking on it. We're going to edit story style sheet. Scrolling down here to the very bottom of example three code, we see this. Now in this time, we're going back, we're using wrapper again, display grid, display template columns. And this time, like with the first example, we're using percentages again. So 20%, 60%, 20% for a total of 100. However, this time we're using named areas. So as we saw before, we can use grid template columns to set column sizes, grid template rows to set rows. We can also name the grid template areas. So in this case, we arrange it like we want to have it on the page. So left sidebar, content, right sidebar. So that's row one. Left sidebar, content, right sidebar, row two. Left sidebar, content, right sidebar, row three. And then looking at those rules, within left sidebar, we say, okay, this is a grid area corresponding to the same name of left sidebar. So then this becomes left sidebar. Down here, within content, content area, or grid area, content. So this is the content. And then the same down, down here with right sidebar, grid area, right sidebar. And then I set some extra rules here so we could see it. So background color gray, and then a little extra padding for the text. Down here for column, background color of white, color of the text back to black so we can see it with a little extra padding. And the same down here with gray, which is what we see in practice. So we have background color gray for left sidebar, background color of gray for right sidebar, background color of white for the content area, and the color of the font text is black, which was set with the color CSS rule right here. So background color white, color back to black. So we can see in the same way here, using CSS grids, we can actually name the areas and then within the CSS rules, use those names and the CSS grid rules within the browser will arrange that for us using the names back to the, temp the grid template areas. So there are three different examples here of how to use CSS grids. We can establish a grid template pattern as we did in example one and example three and then we can set where we want those to be, either grid using grid row or grid column, using whatever number we want for whatever grid or column we want. And the second example here, we can actually, instead of writing them out, if we're going to have a lot of them, use the repeat functionality to define those templates for us. We can also have an auto flow rule for if things extend too far to wrap them in different ways using either rows or columns. And then finally, we can actually name all those areas and then get the CSS rules to arrange, get the CSS grid rules to arrange all of that for us within our story. So here are three different examples of using CSS grids within Twine 2.1. Now notice, of course, I actually didn't include any Twine code. I didn't reference any story functionality from either Harlow, Sugarcube, or Snowman. Now the reason for this is that it's actually universal code. It's just CSS and HTML. And you could use it with any style, with any story format to do different style things. And in fact, you can put functionality within any of those elements and have it appear in the different sidebars, for example, three, and within the boxes, for example, two, or within the setup, for example, one. And so these are more universal ways it, sort of outside of any story format that might reference them. But you can use CSS grids to create, rapidly create that is, st uh, user interfaces for your stories using the CSS grid functionality. However, as I mentioned at the very beginning with the big caveat, you may run into issues with Microsoft Internet Explorer or Microsoft Edge browsers. However, it should work going into the future with other browsers such as Chrome or Firefox or Safari or other browsers um, that don't have as large popularity. However, again, this is experimental technology. It allows us to rapidly prototype this. We can develop these ideas of arranging things with the CSS grids, but it also comes at the cost that not every browser supports in different ways. And we have to sort of keep that in mind of what we, what we want our players to see and how we want to construct our user interfaces within our stories in Twine 2.1. Thanks for watching.